Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Let's start with this interesting question right here before we get into the topic. Now, who is the better football player right here? Is it Cristiano Ronaldo or is it Lionel Messi? So who did you pick? Now, in order to compare both Ronaldo and Messi, we must first establish our basis of comparison. Maybe we want to see who performs better in international matches or maybe major tournaments like football world cup or maybe you want to see who performed better in premier league matches all right and so now we shall introduce our topic which is statistics all right so what is statistics statistics is just the process of collecting and analyzing data so we see this long information here. Statistics is just collecting and analyzing data. All right. So just as we were, we saw a while ago with Cristiano and Messi, we would collect data about them and then analyze it to see who's better. So then the question you ask is, so why should I know statistics? How is this important in real life, right? Why should we know statistics? Well, statistics is essential in real life because statistics provides us with method that allows us to be able to design and plan how we carry out research studies. For example, you may be given a school project to research how COVID-19 has affected the teaching and learning process. Or maybe you need to describe and make inference about something. This is just summarizing data that you collected and make a prediction or a general, or a general conclusion about a phenomena represented by the data set that you have. So that's the importance of statistics. So leave a comment. Tell us some example of statistics that you see in real life or the need for statistics in real life. Now let's give you some examples. Now in the medical field, right, maybe right now, Many persons are concerned with what is the right amount of dosage that is needed for treatment of COVID-19. There's a lot of planning that goes into that to come up with the number of two or three dosage. All right, so that's statistics right there. Maybe in economics, maybe what will be the unemployment rate next year and what are some policies that can, can be implemented in the Caribbean region to improve jobs lost due to COVID-19. Now again, we'd have to collect some data and analyze it to see, first and foremost, based on the trends, how many more jobs are to be lost and what are some policies we can do. Again, that's statistics. All right? Now, before we get into all we need to know about statistics, here are some general terms. Population. A population is the set representing all measurements of interest to the investigator. That's all is population, the whole, the whole general interest that we need um, information about, that's a population. The sample is just a subset that we're going to take from the population. So let's give you an example. Let's say you're asked to compare how students performed in additional mathematics in the Caribbean before and after the COVID-19 pandemic. So the whole population of interest would be all the students who sat additional mathematics from 2012 to 2021, all nine year groups. But a sample could be, maybe we select 500 students from St. Kitts and Barbados from the 2017 and 2020 group. Or another sample here is we could select 1,000 students from Trinidad and Jamaica from the 2018 group and the 2021 group respectively. Those are just a small portion of all those ADMAT students between 2012 to 2021. So now, before we really kickstart into what we want to learn about, 
let's think about some more general terms number one is sampling so what is sampling you might be wondering well think about it this way when you're doing a research you need information about a particular group right this group is known as the target population but the method in which you're going to obtain this information from this group is known as sampling that's all the method how you're going to obtain this information that's sampling now there are many types of sampling there's simple random sampling there's systematic sampling there's stratified sampling there's clustered sampling there's convenience sampling there's quota sampling there's judgment sampling there's snowball sampling now scrap all of the bottom four we only need to remember four of them simple random systematic stratified and cluster the others are not on the admat syllabus so let's start with simple random what is simple random simple random is a sample a simple random sample is a subset of a statistical population in which each member of the subset has an equal probability of being chosen so we generally say a simple random is meant to be an unbiased representation of a group we understand better with examples so here's an example for you let's say you were at, let's say we just randomly choose 15 admat students from a random raffle with 100 students name on it now everybody has an equally likely chance of being selected so that was very random and so of course that's simple random because it's just really random now let's look at systematic you hear the word systematic what should come to your mind is organize a structure so systematic is just a sampling method in which the sample members from a larger population are selected according to a random starting point but with a fixed and periodic interval this interval is called the sampling interval and is calculated by dividing the population size by the desired sample size let's say for example we wanted to select 10 persons from a population of 1000 using systematic sampling then all the participants must be placed in a list and at a starting point we select someone once we select someone the every hundredth person on the list will then be selected because 1000 divided by 100 that would give us 10 so it's a systematic way in which we select the 10 person thus all the hundredth person on the list would then be selected not as fair but it's systematic it's the structure all right next is stratified sampling what is stratified sampling stratified sampling is a type of sampling method in which the total population is divided into smaller groups also called strata all right and that's stratified sampling an example is let's say we want to analyze how covid 19 has affected the internal systems of individuals in the caribbean and let's say we want to use a sample size of a thousand then we can break it up and say maybe we want 200 persons between 0 to 12 200 between 12 to 19 200 between 90 to 26 200 between 26 and 40 and 200 persons above 40 why did we do that maybe we had an idea that covid 19 would affect each different age group differently but overall we just want to see how it affects the internal systems or the internal organs and individuals and so we should have chosen 1000 randomly to for it to be fair or we stratify we break it up into stratas or different smaller groups all right that's stratified sampling and finally there is cluster sampling all right there is cluster sampling so cluster sampling is the probability sampling technique where research cluster sampling is a probability sampling technique where researchers divide the population into multiple groups and then what we do is after we divide them into multiple groups we call that cluster we then use simple random groups from that and then we collect data from those 
randomly selected groups out of the clusters. Now, that probably sounds a lot, but let's break it down. So maybe you're conducting a research and you want to judge the performance of first-year student athletes in major athletic meets across the Caribbean. That would be impossible to conduct a research with all first-year university athletes, don't it? Because there's university all over the Caribbean. Now, what we can do instead then is we can, we can use cluster sampling. So the researcher can club the universities from one country in one cluster. Meaning, instead of using, let's start with, the different universities in Jamaica, you have University of Technology, you have UIMONA, you have so many other universities, over 30. All right, now we can't just take one university re to represent one cluster for this particular Caribbean country. We can choose one more from another country in Barbados. Let's use UI. All right, so we use UI from Barbados. We use UI in Trinidad, Augustine, right? Let's just keep on use one from each, all right? And form our different clusters. And then we can randomly select at least from those. So we selected our clusters and that's cluster sampling, all right? Now that we get a gist of the types of sampling, now we need to talk about the important stuff which is getting into the meat of the matter, descriptive versus inferential statistics. Now, this is key because these can come on the MCQ papers. All right, so we need to know these things because they can come on the MCQ paper. Now, descriptive statistics, this is the branch of statistics that is devoted to summarizing and describing data. All right, that's descriptive statistics, summarizing and organizing data. Inferential statistics, this is a branch of statistics where we just make a conclusion based on what we have obtaining from a sample of the population. Absolutely key, it's based on what we obtain from a sample. All right, so let's say I gave you right here, Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. And I said, we want to, maybe I start by asking you, which of these two wonderful female artists here is a better singer? I'm asking you to describe to me who's a better singer. Now, let's just get this out of the way. They're both magnificent, right? Rihanna has recorded 75 hit songs, all right, between a span of 16 years with her top song being Umbrella. And she's amassed over 17 million views on YouTube and over 12, 20 million on Spotify. Nicki Minaj, way up there. Nicki Minaj, way up there as well. 117 recorded songs from 2001 to 2021 with her top song, Shrouds. And my favorite Nicki Minaj song is I Ain't Through, right? I Ain't Through, that one lovely i love Nicki minaj so i just want to get that out there big fan of both of them but let's say we're asked to, to just determine which of them is the better singer all right now to compare Nicki minaj and rihanna maybe you want to compare them in terms of in terms of performance by year who perform better at whichever awards for the year right maybe you want to compare them based on the amount of views for their top hit or maybe you want to compare them based on their net worth, all right? These are all information that can be depicted on a statistical diagram. And so this is descriptive statistics, all right? So to make those comparisons, we use descriptive statistics. That would be descriptive statistics there. So the key thing to take away is descriptive statistics can be de depicted on statistical diagrams. Statistical diagrams are like bar charts, pie charts, all of those good stuff you'd have learned in CSEC mathematics. All right? Now, let's say we had asked you, who will end their career a better artist? Who will end their career a better artist between Nikki and Rihanna? Now, to make such an inference, right, we will have to make a conclusion based on what? Some yearly trend. So we'd have to go back through the information that we'd have obtained from our sample and then make conclusion 
this is an example of the need of inferential statistics all right this is inferential statistics lovely now we almost finished with the basics of statistics now let's start statistics now in order to start statistics we need to know the data that we're collecting it may be one of two data types you may either want to collect qualitative data or quantitative data based on your research qualitative data this is just data that doesn't have numeric values all right these are categorical variables for example your eye color your blood type your ethnic group the car a person drive the street a person live on those are not numeric values so those are qualitative data all right now quantitative data are data now that we collect that have values they have numbers to them all right how much how often example like the amount of money you have in the bank i'm not asking you i'm just giving it as an example your height your weight the number of people living in your community those are examples of quantitative you can put a definite amount to it the next bit of information we need to know is discrete data and continuous data all right now discrete data or discontinuous data is information that can only take certain values all right for example a child cannot have a shoe size of 3.72 when we talk about shoe size they only hear seven seven and a half eight you never hear 3.62 or 3.99 right so therefore these are not continuous these are discrete data so when you're counting and you're counting shoe size how do we count shoe size a half one one and a half two size two and a half size three right it's not continuous because we're missing out some values that's the best way to remember discrete data now this type of data is usually depicted by tallies by charts or pie charts and then finally there is continuous data Continuous data, these take numeric values or they can take any numeric values like your height. It's continuous. You can be 152 centimeters tall or maybe 152.39 centimeters tall or maybe 152.896245 blah 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 centimeters tall and you keep on going. So height, weight, temperature, length, these are all continuous data and they can change over time they can fluctuate the weight of a baby in its first year or the temperature in a room throughout the day now when there's always the possibility of fluctuation this data is best represented on a line graph because it shows trends all right so what i want you to do is go on the scale in the morning you weigh yourself and you go on the scale in the evening and you're going to see two different readings that's because our weight can fluctuate throughout the day you can even measure your height it's continuous data so that summarized the intro to atmat statistics i really hope this video was enjoyable all right stay tuned for more as we break down statistics and we're gonna have lots of fun all right take care and see you soon